Tina and I and um, Chris and Alison and Cherie are doing this crossways course, which is helping us to do the things that mm. Tina's really leading us through. She's a great example of, of how the program, if we call it a program, it's not, we not meant to use that word actually. <laughs> um, we don't do programs. <laughs> yeah, but it's so easy to do. And um, we've got to retrain our, our mind into keeping it simple and not getting caught up in the theological, um, mm. what we regard as opportunities that we've got to hit everyone over the head with scripture. Mm. I think we've got to firstly build trust and you've done that. With yeah, this. I think building trust and actually getting to know that person and what interests them, like Pete's an avid snail collector. <laughs> so, you know, he's taken me out a couple of times when he's been collecting snails. And when I was looking after some grandchildren, um, he, he invited them along, you know? And so we all went snail collecting with Pete. Um, and, but you know, when you're out in nature, it's again, he knows that I love nature. I love gardening, it's a connection. So it's, it's finding with people what's important to them and seeing if you can find a connection within that importance and that builds the relationship and the trust. Yes, but I think another aspect is spending time yeah. developing that relationship. And that's, time is something that we all value personally. We, sometimes we don't want to share our free time with others. Mm. But I think unless we're willing to make that sacrifice, we're going to miss so many opportunities. So, Tina, thank you very much for sharing that. But before you go, I want to pray for you because you're leaving <laughs> us <laughs> for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> and so, well, we're sad but glad um, that that is going to happen. But we pray that the Lord has gone before you and that there will be no mishaps. You won't leave anything behind. I won't tell you that story. <laughs> she's got a checklist. This time. <laughs> and so, you know, we pray that the people that you surround on your travels, on the planes, on buses, that you will be able to just have a, a great conversation. Hmm. And maybe not necessarily Christian experience, but to befriend the person, to support them in their travel. To, and I think mm. loneliness is, is a big thing, and you're mm. very good at reaching out to those people. So we pray for those opportunities, Lord. And we also pray for protection, for safety. And we pray for those connections with family again, Lord, as they all re reunite after a period of time of being absent. And we pray for all the arrangements that uh, Tina's going to undertake, that they'll all just come to be at the right time. And uh, Father, keep her safe, keep her healthy, and bring her back to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you. Actually, as a specific prayer, my son contacted me this morning to tell me there's forest fires raging in that area and what that means in terms of um, not safety necessarily, but being able to do things with my grandchildren is we can't go outside because it's so smoky that you can be outside for five minutes and then you have to come back in because your eyes are burning, you know, your throat is raw and um, you can't even leave the windows open at night because if you do, there's like a thick thing of ash on the window ledge. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not like they're threatening people's houses, but they threaten the health of the whole valley because, you know, the fire sits in. And, um, yeah. Okay, well, I think we should pray for this particular incident, that God will send a wind that will clear the smoke and so that there will be no restrictions. You'll be able to have time with your grandchildren outside. All right? Bless you. Okay. Yep, technology's good if we know how to use it. 
But anyway, um, you can see there are ways of coping um, in the challenging world we live. And I just want, want to relate a little story that um, a few years ago when I was younger, I was at a youth convention in Lower Hutt. And we had some very high, powerful speakers that were there encouraging us. And I remember this Canadian guy. He was actually the ambassador for Canada at the time. And um, he was, I can't really recollect the subject that he talked on, but the thing that impressed me was at the end of it, he opened it up for questions. And um, being young, some people uh, really feel they have to fly their own flag. And this poor guy got crucified by one particular guy with his questions. And in the end, it, the Canadian said, well, look, we've all got to start somewhere. And we, he said, we start with small steps. It's no good looking to the sky when we can't get off the ground in a plane. So that impressed me was the fact that we have to start small. And it's something that's always stayed with me. So when we look about and we see all the things that are going on around us, we can help change things for the better by just getting alongside someone, listening to their situation, their life story, and just being a listening ear. And that way we can build up a relationship because they can see that we care, that we're interested in what they're doing and how they are coping. Maybe getting to know their family. Maybe going for snail hunts. But these are the little things that make a big difference in people's lives who are struggling, who have no hope, really, because they don't know who Christ is. We're blessed to know that we are sons and daughters of the living God. And I just pray this morning that we will have a peace, that we won't feel apprehensive about just being ourselves, that we can go out and um, have a cup of coffee or walk the streets and uh, see someone in the garden or mowing the lawn, start a conversation. So really, guys, it's a lot easier than what we think. And um, Tina, I'm just so touched with the opportunity that laid there. And part of the conversation you didn't say was that when it was Peter, was it? Because you, I think, were still mem remembering what his wife had said, that she wasn't interested in Christian things and uh, wasn't going to have any conversation about that. But then when you're out having that glass with Peter, he said, oh, don't believe that. I, I, I'm saying the Lord's Prayer every night. I'm open. So... So we've got to pick up on those little things. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit will give us that sensitivity to just grab hold of those things and build on them. People want to be noticed and um, loved. Jesus loves each of us in a way that we can't imagine. It's so enormous how he cares for us. And, you know, we've been created in his image. So we have his DNA. We have that ability to connect with people, just as he did when he was here. Right, so I'm just going to pray now. Father God, I thank you that you have called us. You have a plan for each of our lives, Father God. And um, Father, as we've seen today with Tina, as a great example of um, her being a light on her street. I pray that each of us will be a light, Lord, to either our workplaces, our families, or in this community, and that we would um, just be so sensitive, Lord, to the things that you have around us, the people that we cross. And um, Lord, let our light shine strongly, I pray, because Lord, we are overcomers. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you for what you have 
plan for us in the future. Amen.